بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد What are those things which prohibit itikaf or violate itikaf? That's something also very important that we need to know as Muslims. That what violates our itikaf? You know, what are those things which we have to be cautious as Muslims regarding itikaf? And that violate or break our itikaf? So now that we have an understanding of what itikaf is, bi'idnillah ta'ala, We'll try to look at some of those things which violate our itikaf. Some of the things that we need to be concerned with and know first and foremost that itikaf, it doesn't require, but we're referring in general to itikaf of Ramadan, meaning that, of course, you're fasting during this time, bi'idnillah ta'ala. But Though many of the ulama, like the, the Shafi'iya and the Hanabila, and a group of the Salaf, and Imam Ibn Hazm, wa Imam Nawawi, wa Imam uh, Ibn Daqiq al Eid, rahimahumullah, jami'an, said that it is not a condition for a person to be fasting for itikaf. But let's take a look at what violates our itikaf. The things that violate our itikaf that we have to be concerned with, the first thing is what in relation to is khuruj min al-masjid, is leaving the masjid, okay? In general, leaving the masjid. And now we need to look at some of the deli- some of the uh, tafsil or some of the details regarding leaving the masjid. So regarding leaving the masjid, It is divided into two, uh, two separate issues here. The first issue is leaving the masjid with part of your body, meaning sticking your head outside the masjid or an arm to grab some food or whatever the situation. So if you, some of your body leaves the masjid, what is the ruling regarding that? Is that still considered itikaf? Does that violate your itikaf? So, the ulama say that there is no problem. This does not violate your itikaf. And this, as we know, the Prophet Sallallahu in the hadith of Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, where the, she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stuck his head out side the masjid and she, would, and she was uh, menstruating and she combed his hair while he was a mu'takif, while he was... Uh, in a state of itikaf. And so that shows us as evidence that that does not violate our itikaf. And this is in accordance with the ittifaq of the fuqaha, the fuqaha are in agreement with this, the uh, Hanafiya, the Malikiya and the Shafi'iya, with the Hanabila, they're in agreement that if you stick out part of your body, you have to reach outside the masjid, a leg is outside the masjid, your head, for whatever reason, that sticking part of your body outside the masjid does not violate your itikaf. What about if all of your body leaves the masjid without an excuse? So in this situation, if you leave the masjid without a valid excuse, then your itikaf is uh, violated. So if you go outside the masjid without any valid reason, then the ulama are in agreement that the itikaf is violated. And this is in accordance, as we mentioned, the four great imams, rahimahumullah, jami'an. And Ibn Hazm's uh, said that it was ijma, meaning that it was consensus amongst the scholars. That if you leave the masjid without a legitimate excuse to leave completely, then you have violated your itikaf.
And some of the evidence for this is a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An Aisha قالت, وَإِن كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِيُدْخِلُوا عَلَيَّ رَاسُهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فأرج, فَأَرْجِلُهُ وَكَانَ لَا يُدْخُلُ الْبَيْتِ إِلَّا بِحَاجَةً إِذَا كَانَ مُعْتَقِفٍ Beautiful hadith which gives us very strong evidence about this issue. And so Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to enter upon her, meaning his head, enter his head upon her, meaning he would put his head outside of the masjid into her room and she would comb his hair. And she would not enter his house except out of necessity. And that's what we need to look at when he was making itikaf. So letting us know that the condition there, which would make itikaf still valid, would only be if it was a necessity. Then we have to look at what are those necessities. So the ulama, they're in agreement. If, that, if a person leaves due to a necessity from hissin or shar'in, meaning either due to a body, something related to their senses, out of necessity, or related to the sharia, out of necessity, that that is permissible and that does not uh, harm your itikaf. And some of the things that the scholars mentioned, for example, out, uh, the necessity to use the restroom, that's hissin, that you have to, from your senses, you need to uh, dispose of the waste of Allah that's in your body, so that does not affect your itikaf going to the restroom, leaving to go to the restroom and then going back into the masjid, making wudu and going back into the masjid or what have you. So that does not spoil your itikaf. Or you need to make wudu because for one of those various reasons and other than that. So those are some of the reasons why are a, a person which, which might necessitate them leaving the masjid and their itikaf is still sound. They still have itikaf. And that is in accordance with the ijma of the ulama, Imam uh, Ibn Mundhir, we Imam Ibn Qudama, we Imam an Nawawi, Rahimahumullah, Jami'an. They all had agreements on this and they all related that there was ijma of the ulama, meaning that there was a consensus amongst the scholars about this issue. Another thing, another issue related to itikaf or breaking, in, uh, violating one's itikaf or invalidating it is having sexual relations or uh, sperm coming out, ejaculating. So having sexual relations or ejaculating intentionally violates your itikaf. And the evidence for this is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallah to bashir uhunu and tum akifuna fil misajid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not, you know, have relations with them, meaning your your wives. And you are mu'taqif, meaning you are uh, you are in the masjid making taqarabil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, that, and so that lets us know that that violates our itikaf. So having sexual relations, of course, violates itikaf and intentionally doing something to uh, ejaculate violates your itikaf. And that is ijma, according to, uh, that's consensus, according to Ibn Mundir and Wal Jasas, Wa Ibn Hazm, Rahimahumullah, Jami'an. Then the issue arises, what about the person who has uh, has a wet dream. So if a person has a wet dream while they're having it to calf, while they're making it to calf, that does not violate their it to calf. That does not violate their it to calf. But they must make ghusl and finish their it to calf. They must make ghusl and finish their it to calf. And this is also with the in accordance with the consensus of the fuqaha, meaning the four imams had agreements on this. And the evidence for this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said alayhi salatu wasalam, Rufiya qalam an thalatha an naim an naim hatta yastaykhath wa an sabi hatta yahtalam wa an majmu wa an al majnoon hatta yaqul. That the Prophet ﷺ said the pen is lifted on three. 
uh, the person sleeping until they wake, awaken, the child until he uh, reaches puberty, and the uh, person who is lost their sanity until they regain their sanity. So they're letting us know that something that's out of your control like that does not break your uh, itikaf. So meaning if you have a wet dream while you're in itikaf, make ghusl and continue your itikaf. It does not violate itikaf. And Another thing that violates it to calf is, for example, if a woman, she has receives her menses, uh, and of course nifas, meaning the postnatal bleeding, that does not allow for her to make it to calf, nor, and, and if it comes while she is on her, uh, uh, while she's making it to calf, her hive, her menses comes, that she must break her, her it to calf and cannot complete her it to calf. because, and this is due to the fact that she, uh, it is not permissible to stay in the masjid during uh, Haidh. And this is the qul, this is the statement of the Jamhur of the ulama, the Malikiyah, the Shafi'i, and the Hanabila. And Ibn Qudama said it was ijma ala tahrim for the woman who is in her menstruation to stay in the masjid. So it shows us the importance of that when a woman is menstruating that she should not stay in the masjid and we mentioned some some ulama make exception to that and say that there's no uh, sound uh, evidence for that and and so forth and especially if a woman can guarantee that she's not going to uh, to make the masjid uh, filthy, then if it was out of necessity, she could stay in the masjid, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But I think it's better to, the most safest is to avoid that if a woman is on her menses, to avoid staying in the masjid. And we do know at least, related to this issue, that it breaks the itikaf of the woman if she has her menses. So she should not... Um, And one of the evidences that they use, which is general evidence, which does not speak specifically about menses, but they make qiyas, or they make um, an analogy between junub being in sex, a state of sexual impurity and the state of menses. They make a analogy from that. So they use this ayat where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, qala Allah Ta'ala, Ya yaladina amanu, la لا تقربوا الصلاة وأنتم سكارا حتى تعلموا ما تقولون ولا جنوب إلا عابر السبيل حتى تغتسلوا in Surah An-Nisa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O you who believe do not come close to the prayer and you are in a state of drunkenness and this is of course related to the beginning of Islam that this was one of the ways in prohibiting before alcohol and drunkenness was completely prohibited it was prohibited in stages so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first prohibited coming close to the prayer and being in, in prayer when you were drunk until you know, till you understand meaning drunkenness removes your understanding so that when you're in, you have to be in a state of, of um, sound intellect which is in a state of, of soberness, sobriety so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O you who believe uh, do not come close to the prayer and you are in a state of drunkenness until you regain your intellect, until you understand what you're doing. And do not say and, 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 and know what you're saying. Nor in a state of sexual impurity, meaning junub, except the traveler until you make ghusl. So meaning that the person who is in a state of junub, they have to make ghusl before they can return to being in the masjid and the salat. And the qiyas here, the ulama, they say this is not restricted. Those ulama that use that as evidence say it is not restricted to just the person in junub, but this is also includes the haid when nifas, the woman who is in her menstruation, meaning that she has to wash herself, uh, make ghusl before 
uh, uh, she, may, she has to be pure and make ghusl. So she should not be in a state of ittikaf or staying in the masjid in a state of impurity. Another thing which violates your ittikaf or makes your... If a person loses their sanity or uh, faints, they, they have a, go into a coma or they are, are what have you. May Allah protect us from that. That violates your itikaf. And if the person regains their, their state, then they can make itikaf after that. If they regain their sanity or regain consciousness or what have you. And this is in accordance to the jamhur of the ulama have this view. Another thing which is imperative for us to, two things. First, we'll talk really briefly about ridda. That if a person leaves Islam, of course, this validates their itikaf. It validates, it, in, it invalidates, or it, it violates and, and, and destroys all of their previous deeds if, you, if they leave Islam. So that doesn't require a lot of discussion or looking into depth in depth about the evidences and, and, and so forth. That is something well known. That if you uh, leave the fold of Islam, of course your itikaf is uh, finished. And the issue we want to look at though is ma'asi. That if a person is doing sins, major sins, that this violates this uh, very overtly and contradicts the meaning of itikaf because itikaf, as we said, is taqarrab Allah. It's seeking, it's going, entering the masjid with the intention to come closer to Allah. Ma'asi, by its very essence, is the opposite of that. It is going further from Allah, from sinfulness. It is not coming closer to Allah, it is the opposite. So, therefore, the person who is committing major sins, for example, things like uh, ghiba and namima, that they're backbiting, slandering people in the masjid. They're violating their itikaf. And this is in accordance with the statement of the, uh, the majority of the scholars hold this view, uh, the Hanafiya, the Shafi'iyya, and the Hanabila, and that's due to the prohibition of ma'asi in general, of sinfulness. And so that's imperative that we use our time wisely during the itikaf and avoid those things which violate our itikaf. And those are the things which violate and uh, invalidate our itikaf, our seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to make itikaf, bless us to come closer to Him, bless us to have an accepted itikaf, an accepted Ramadan, accepted fasting, accepted good deeds, and may Allah forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.